Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Mark Eatonson. I'm a licensed psychologist specializing in the treatment of pathological narcissism and related issues, and also author of the book Unmasking Narcissism, A Guide to Understanding the Narcissist in Your Life, available on Amazon and at major book retailers. The book's a hands-on guide to understanding the psychology of narcissism from an empathic and compassionate perspective. So, a number of listeners have commented on how difficult it is to find a good therapist to treat narcissistic issues. And some have also asked if therapy is really necessary. So today I'd like to address both of those issues. First, I'll discuss the relative lack of therapists who really understand narcissism, and I'll also make some suggestions about where you might find ones that do. I'll also discuss why I think therapy is necessary for healing. In my opinion, it's only possible to get just so far down the path by yourself. Pathological narcissism is created in our early relationships, and it's best healed through the experience of a positive, corrective relationship with a qualified therapist. So let's start with the shocking lack of qualified therapists who treat this disorder. There are plenty of clinicians who specialize in working with individuals who have been hurt or abused by someone with NPD. But it seems that only a handful of therapists actually specialize in working with narcissists themselves. Of those, an even smaller number actually seem to understand the psychology of narcissism. I'm sometimes asked to provide an expert review of new books on the topic of narcissism, and I have yet to see a draft that doesn't pick the very low-hanging fruit of characterizing narcissists as, quote, evil. Likewise, most of the information online is heavily slanted in the direction of pathologizing and othering people with this disorder, treating NPD as a one-dimensional straw man rather than a complex, trauma-based variant of human psychology. I spend more time than I'd like defending myself against people who seem to believe that the only permissible thing to say when it comes to narcissism is, those people are terrible. All of this is to say that when it comes to narcissism, there's a fair bit of confusion, and it can be difficult to find a therapist whose knowledge of NPD can't be summed up by a DSM checklist, something they heard from a colleague about a difficult patient, or an article they read on psychologytoday.com. I vividly recall sitting in a case consultation group a number of years ago. A colleague was presenting a case that had them stumped, and I commented that the patient sounded narcissistic. The colleague gave my comment a cursory acknowledgement, but didn't really seem to take it seriously. So I repeated my observation. I actually repeated it two more times. Finally, they turned to me and they exclaimed, Yes, I get it. They're narcissistic. But how does that help me? And it was then that I realized that my colleague only understood narcissism as an insult, something derogatory to say to someone who's behaving selfishly. Meanwhile, I was thinking of it as a personality style based on comprehensible relational trauma that has clear implications for the course of treatment. My colleague simply thought I was calling their patient a name. And sadly, this perspective is quite common among mental health professionals. Even the ones who purportedly specialize in NPD often come from a decidedly surface-level, skills-based paradigm, and they don't really understand the psychology of the people they're treating. And in my opinion, anyone who really understands narcissism sees it as a tragic disorder based in unfathomable loss and betrayal of the child's most basic needs for unconditional love and positive regard. The author, Stephen Johnson, calls narcissists used children, and I have yet to hear a more apt description. Of course, there are also plenty of internet experts on narcissism, and some of them even have formal training in psychology but most of them also opt for the familiar, stigmatizing approach in their treatment of the topic. It's much more difficult, and sadly rare, to find someone who can balance the humanity of all involved and discuss the complexities of pathological narcissism as both a psychological phenomenon that afflicts individuals and as a relational phenomenon that afflicts groups or pairs of people. The nature of narcissistic pathology is to collapse psychological and emotional space to defend against shame and vulnerability. This defense is called splitting. I'm good, you're bad. It's both comforting and regressive to view the world in shades of black and white. How ironic, then, 
that almost all of the information out there about this disorder engages in the same regressive maneuver, portraying complex relational dynamics in oversimplified terms of doer and done to. So what's a person to do? I know for a fact that there are many people out there who struggle with narcissism and who also want help. I see them in my practice. I get emails from them on a daily basis. I read their comments on my videos. There are large internet forums where narcissists try to support each other on the path to healing. All of this somehow goes unseen by both the lay public and the mental health establishment, where the common wisdom is that narcissists don't want help. They don't seek help, and they can't be helped. And to be fair, this portrayal is sometimes true. But the same could be said for almost any other mental illness. There is always a subset of treatment-resistant patients who simply don't want or can't accept help. There are always individuals who are too defended, who reject the well-meant attempts by their loved ones to tell them that they have a problem, that something is wrong. Such thick-headedness is in no way unique to narcissists. And in my experience, there are many narcissists out there who want help. So what should they do? Where should they turn to find help that isn't about making them swallow the narrative that they're terrible people and that the only, quote, cure is to basically cease to exist? As you might be able to tell, this topic is incredibly frustrating to me. The material is there for anyone to read. Very smart people have been writing about this disorder for over a hundred years. It wasn't until the 21st century that the literature on narcissism took a decidedly ugly turn in the direction of vilification and stigmatization. Heinz Kohut created an entire branch of psychological theory and technique based around the idea that narcissists are human beings who have sustained a comprehensible and tragic wound, an early relational trauma that set them against themselves, and left them without the basic psychological tools they need to evaluate their experience in balanced and realistic ways. More importantly, his ideas are rooted in the recognition that narcissism is about deficits, not the presence of some malignant pathology. There's a legacy of mainstream psychological theory dating back to the mid-20th century that provides a compassionate perspective on the disorder, while not losing sight of the maladaptive aspects of NPD that require intervention. The simple fact is that clinicians used to know how to treat narcissism. They used to understand it. Then the DSM disorder got redefined in the mid-1980s, turning NPD into the caricature disorder we see today, ungrounded in actual human psychology, untethered to the subjective distress and suffering that normally defines mental illness, Basically, a two-dimensional list of superficial traits that only describe a narrow variant of NPD and make it almost impossible to conceptualize actually treating the disorder. I could go on about this at length, and I have in some of my videos on the Heal NPD YouTube channel. More importantly, I'm not the only one making these criticisms. There are numerous articles in major peer-reviewed journals in the last 15 years leveling these same complaints much more articulately than I ever could. And I want to be clear that this isn't just a frustrated rant. The point I'm trying to make is that modern psychology has gone off the rails to a certain extent when it comes to NPD. To find someone who can treat this disorder effectively, you need to look outside the usual channels. Specifically, I'm talking about finding clinicians who know and utilize psychoanalytic methods in their practice. I know. Psychoanalysis has gotten a bad reputation, but then again, so has NPD, and I assume you're beginning to see how NPD's reputation is somewhat distorted. If you have preconceived ideas about psychoanalytic theory and technique, then I ask you to suspend them for a few minutes, because I assure you that this reputation is similarly distorted. Psychoanalysis has come a very long way since the days of Sigmund Freud. I teach a course on the topic to doctoral students. At the beginning of the course, I ask them to share their ideas. What have they heard? What were they taught? Always, I hear the same critiques. It's not scientific. Its basic assumptions about the mind are unfalsifiable. It's basically a cult, etc. And all of that was true 90 years ago. Over the last 100 years, psychoanalysis has progressed and changed 
radically from the early conjectures of Freud. It's gone through a number of profound iterations, and contemporary psychoanalytic theory and technique is actually focused on relationships as the bedrock of human psychology. Furthermore, psychoanalytic therapies continue to show amazing effectiveness in the treatment of numerous issues, but they particularly shine when it comes to complex, personality-based psychopathologies, and I'll link some studies in the comments. The main perspective that I use in thinking about narcissism is called self-psychology. It's one branch on the tree of psychoanalytic theory. Self-psychology was founded by Heinz Kohut. It's a radical re-examination of the origins of selfhood, centering and contextualizing the development of the self in our most early relationships and following the course of that self-development through the lifespan. It's grounded in compassion and empathy, in fact, self-psychology promotes the experience of empathy as the most important factor in the development of a healthy self, and it also promotes it as the most important tool in the therapist's toolbox when treating narcissism. Narcissists, according to Kohut, suffer from a chronic lack of empathy. You can't give what you haven't got. To heal NPD, there must be an intensive and prolonged period in which the patient is simply soaking up the therapist's empathy, much like a very young child soaks up their parents' empathy. We discover ourselves through empathic interactions with others. So here's my advice to find treatment. Most large cities have a psychoanalytic society of some kind or other. Look them up. Send an email to their contact asking for a referral. Even if you don't live near a large city, there's probably one somewhere in your state. And many clinicians currently are doing online therapy. Most clinicians who are affiliated with such an organization will have a psychoanalytic perspective on narcissism, which means that they understand it as a form of early relational trauma. Even if they know little to nothing else about it, this simple paradigm will make a world of difference in their ability to provide a consistent empathic response in treatment. Furthermore, analytic therapists are focused on the therapy relationship. They're less concerned about symptoms and surface level presentation, and they're less concerned about skills development and diagnosis. They focus on what is happening in the here and now relationship, which is exactly where the focus needs to be to treat NPD. Now this isn't foolproof advice. When you're looking for someone, ask them the following question. How do you understand narcissistic pathology? If their response mentions self-esteem difficulties, shame, early wounds to the developing self, an interplay between grandiose and vulnerable self-states, or negotiating a series of pushes and pulls in the therapy relationship, then you probably found a keeper. Alternatively, if they focus on access to, cluster B, or superficial things like pride, entitlement, fantasies of perfection, or mention anything about malignant narcissism, Machiavellianism, characterize narcissists as abusers, or say anything that sounds sort of othering about the disorder, then find someone else. Now you should expect to pay more for a psychoanalytic therapist. But you should also know that most clinicians in private practice keep a few low fee spots. Don't be afraid to ask for that if you genuinely can't afford full fee. You may also be able to negotiate less frequent meetings. Therapy will take longer if you meet less often, but something is better than nothing. Okay, so I also want to address the question of whether therapy is even necessary. Why can't you simply heal yourself? Well, to be perfectly honest, a significant proportion of healing does take place on your own. But after more than a decade of focusing on this disorder, I'm convinced that self-treatment alone is not sufficient, and here's why. The early emotional wounds that set narcissistic pathology in motion interfere with the development of accurate self-perception. Narcissism is a disorder characterized by deficits, deficits in the ability to perceive self and others, deficits in the ability to manage and maintain realistic self-esteem deficits in coping, and deficits in interpersonal communication. Donald Winnicott, a famous psychoanalyst and pediatrician who coined the term false self, said it like this. He said, in individual emotional development, 
The precursor of the mirror is the mother's face. The mother gazes at the baby in her arms, and the baby gazes at his mother's face and finds himself therein, provided that the mother is really looking at the unique, small, helpless being and not projecting her own expectations, fears, and plans for the child. In that case, the child would not find himself in the mother's face, but rather the mother's own projections. This child would remain without a mirror and for the rest of his life would be seeking this mirror in vain. So to sum it up, what Winnicott is saying is that we discover ourself through interactions with other people. The self is fundamentally relational. It only exists in relation to others. There's no such thing as a self without other. So if narcissism is the disorder of the self, in which the development of the self has been stunted, then the way to repair this deficit is through a specific kind of interaction with an other. In this case, it's the interaction with the therapist. Nowhere else will you find a person trained to provide this kind of, quote, reparenting, to give the consistent, positive, empathically attuned mirroring that the self needs to grow and develop. Therapists are also trained to provide a special set of boundaries that protects both you and them from the anger, resentment, and envy that reside inside of a damaged self, allowing those feelings to emerge in productive ways that facilitate and deepen the relationship rather than becoming a, a sort of toxic poison pill that causes the relationship to end. You won't find this with a friend or a partner or a boss or a mentor. You need a therapist. Now, you can and should research this disorder on your own. You should try to find available resources to support you on your journey, like this podcast. But parts of you need to be discovered, and they can only be meaningfully discovered by another person. Another favorite Winnicott quote on this issue goes like this. It's a joy to be hidden, but disaster not to be found. Narcissism is in some ways a disorder that's caused by, quote, not having been found, not having been seen or discovered. That which was never discovered in you remains hidden, even to yourself. And this is the deficit in the self that makes you dependent on continual feedback from others. Only in therapy will you be able to slowly let go of that interpersonal dependency for, quote, narcissistic supply, as you slowly gain more internal resources and a clearer perspective on yourself. And as you see yourself more clearly, you'll also see others more clearly. Okay, so I hope that helps. Now, please be sure to leave questions and comments. And if you find this material helpful, I hope you will consider sharing it or recommending it to others who you feel might also find it helpful. And until next time... Take good care.